subsistence, entertainment, catering, and events. We are now in a position to report on the impact of this reform. Across all national and provincial departments in the first year, a 3% decrease was achieved in spending on consultants, a 6% decrease in travel and subsistence, and a 47% decrease in catering, entertainment, and events expenditure. That was not enough. Preliminary budget data indicates that there will be a further reduction, there will be further reductions in these categories of spending over the medium term expenditure framework, contributing both to value for money and improved public service um, delivery. We recognize that there is not yet full compliance with these measures. The Treasury is currently revising the cost containment instruction to review thresholds and to clarify its implementation, especially on expenditure related to conferences. Honorable members, improving the quality of financial services is a key element in our strategy for inclusive growth. Weaknesses in the financial supervision played a central role in the severity of the 2008 recession and its aftermath. The bill to give effect to the Twin Peaks regulatory system has now been certified by the state law advisors, and I will be tabling it next week on the 27th, if I'm not mistaken. We've engaged with the industry and other stakeholders on the draft framework for market conduct to ensure that customers of the financial sector are treated fairly and that charges are reduced and made more transparent. I also propose to table the, I also propose to table the insurance bill before the end of the year. We have made progress in promoting savings by households through the introduction this year of the tax-free savings products. In collaboration with, the, with Minister Lamine and Minister Wolifant, work on the social security reform proposals is at an advanced stage to accompany retirement reform. I need to emphasize the importance of providing suitable vehicles for preservation of savings and conversion into income at retirement alongside appropriate death and disability benefits. We are engaging with labor to ensure, to ensure that members of provident funds enjoy the full benefits of tax deductions for saving plans that provide an insured income at retirement. I hope that these proposals will be prioritized for discussion in NEDLEC over the period ahead. In addition to promoting domestic savings, South Africa needs to attract substantial flows of foreign funding to ensure that investment growth can be financed. It is clearly vital that we maintain a framework of policies and programs consistent with this requirement. Under your leadership, Mr. President, and guided by our newly appointed National Planning Commission under the chairmanship of Minister Khadebe, we seek to simplify and streamline regulatory procedures to investment and ensure both policy coherence and encouragement of long-term investment and international partnerships. The Treasury's work on modernizing the management of capital flows and encouraging companies to locate in South Africa as a gateway to the rest of Africa supports this aim. Without economic growth, revenue will not increase. Without revenue growth, expenditure cannot increase. Honorable Chairperson, it is apparent that slower growth and volatility will remain features of the world economy for some time to come. In the framework set out in the 2015 medium term budget policy statement, government has adapted to this turbulent environment through measures to maintain the health of the public finances and support the social and economic transformation that South Africa needs. To strengthen economic performance, our commitment is to bring policy coherence and certainty where it is lacking and to give, to give greater impetus to infrastructure investment and to address impediments that hold back enterprise development, employment and innovation. To build the energy capacity, water and transport networks and communication systems we need, that we need, we are mobilizing capacity of state-owned companies and the private sector alongside departmental and municipal initiatives. To ensure that public debt remains affordable, the public expenditure ceiling is maintained while protecting our flagship uh, social and economic programs. To improve living standards and accelerate social development, we are working with municipalities to strengthen planning and concentrate investment in urban hubs and economic growth zones. More dynamic cities, new businesses, trade opportunities and better transport systems also mean stronger linkages with the smaller towns and growing market opportunities for agriculture and rural enterprises. 
to enhance state capacity and the quality of integrity of governance, our financial management and procurement reforms will be reinforced while stepping up public sector training and institutional renew renewal. To unite South Africans behind more rapid implementation of the National Development Plan, we are working with the business sector, organized labor, social stakeholders to maintain a stable labor relations environment, improve confidence, and promote broad-based development. In concluding, I wish to thank you, Mr. President and the Deputy President, for your guidance and leadership, and all Cabinet colleagues for their understanding of the challenges that we confront. The Minister's Committee on the Budget has energetically engaged with the issues. Deputy Minister Jonas has uh, always been cheerful, in, even in the toughest discussions, and the MECs for Finance share diligently in the work of overseeing our public finances. A special thanks also to the Auditor General, Mr. Kimi Makwetu, SARS Commissioner Tom Moyane, Governor Lesi Chakanyako at the Reserve Bank, the boards and executive heads of our Development Finance Institution, and the Financial and Fiscal Commission, and the Financial Services Board. I greatly value the support of NEDLEC and its constituency representative, and the chairs of the Standing and Select Committees of Finance and Appropriations, Honorable Yunus Karim, uh, Honorable Charles de Beer, Honorable Paul Mashatile, and Honorable Saiso Mohai. I am also, also indebted to the Director General Lumisa Fuzile and the staff of the National Treasury and the Ministry for their tireless efforts. The support of my family is also an incalculable blessing. Mr. President, we are pursuing a new growth path to expand participation and adapt to the changing realities of the global landscape. And in the past, though times are tough, we can, as in the past, though times are tough, we can create a better future working together. Within an affordable medium-term expenditure framework, we will build a more prosperous and equal South Africa, sustaining progress even in this slow growth world and environment. As we achieve more rapid growth, our revenue outlook will improve as revenue increases, our expenditure on public service delivery will grow. I hereby, again, as I had said at the beginning, table the, for consideration by this House the medium term budget policy statement, the adjusted estimates of national expenditure, the adjusted appropriation bill, and the division of revenue amendment bill. Thank you very much. These are the documents. Thank you very much, Minister.